What's going on folks? Welcome back to the Let Their Fly YouTube channel. Today we finally start the rebuild of the 850 XMR motor that we've been cleaning, testing, taking apart the whole nine. We're gonna make it into a motor. But uh, right now it looks like this. So uh, we have a lot of work to do. Let's get into it. All right guys, so this is gonna be our longest episode probably ever on the channel. It's probably gonna be well over an hour long, but we're gonna be building this motor with you from the ground up. So we're literally just gonna be starting with just this, the case, which is uh, crazy. So this case I got from High Tech Power Sports. Um, it actually is pretty cool. So this is actually one of their kits that um, actually has the provisions for piston squirters that we're actually not gonna be using because it's a, this is just a stock application, but this is what they use to build their big boy, uh, big engines and stuff like that, big bores, the whole nine. Um, racy stuff, but that's not what we're going for here. We're just looking to do a rebuild. Now, as mentioned in the previous video, Seth and I, we are not Can-Am experts. We are not experts at rebuilding this particular motor, but I have rebuilt other engines in the past, and a lot of this stuff is the same. You just follow the factory service manual, and as far as all torque specs and how to do things, and it's pretty straightforward. But uh, we're gonna try to simplify it a little bit for you in video form here, so this way, you at home can do this, all right? So let's start off by getting some bearings pressed into this guy and also plugging off um, some holes that need to be plugged up because um, this case is, like I said, it's got a lot of provisions, but um, being that it's a complete bear case, we have to transfer some stuff over from the old case. So let's dig into that right now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get our new bearings into the case here. You are gonna need a couple tools though. Exhibit A is a bearing press tool from, uh, this is from Mr. RPM. You can get the Can-Am one or some other people that sell them, but you're gonna need this. What this is gonna do is help align our bearings here, which are these little guys here. And it's gonna help us by putting everything nice and centered onto this tool. So this way everything will press in nice and neat. We're not gonna damage these bearings putting them in. Um, the other thing you'll just need is a marker. That's pretty easy. And then a press tool. So uh, you can get a press pretty cheap from Harbor Freight nowadays. I think this one was like maybe $100, $200, something like that, which I know isn't cheap, cheap, but trust me, it's something you're gonna use around the shop. All right, so now first things first, I'm gonna go to the other camera here. So if you look here, this is our oil passage here. As you can see, there is a little tiny hole right there. It might be a little hard to see on camera, but there's a little tiny hole there. Uh, what we're gonna wanna do is take our marker and actually go ahead and mark said hole. Reason being is that is our uh, oil passageway for the bearings. So we have to make sure this is lined up really good here. Don't worry, you can, you can draw on your stuff. It's okay, it's not gonna hurt it. And we're gonna go ahead and get the bearings ready. Now what I like to do is, on the tool itself here, we're gonna go ahead and just draw a line on my tool so we know where the hole is in the bearing. So obviously we want that hole to line up with the other hole. If we don't, this bearing will not get oil and um, yeah, that things are not gonna be happy. So let's go ahead and try to line this up. It's gonna take a little bit of finagling here because I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. All right, so basically what we're gonna wanna do is where that oil passageway is, and sometimes it does take a little bit of trial and error, but we wanna line that guy up with the other line we have there. Now, um, Can-Am wants you to press these bearings in from the inside out, according to the manual. So we're just gonna go ahead and do just that. So what I'm gonna have to do is I actually have to rotate this because of how my press is. I'm gonna have to rotate this a little bit so this way I can line this up a little bit better. Okay, right there should be the spot. Now we're gonna go ahead, make sure everything is nice and flush here. Go ahead and bring our press down. Once we make touchdown, I'm just gonna go ahead and recheck our lines. Everything's looking good here so far. So I'm gonna bring this back a little bit here. Just want to press a little crooked. Don't want that. All right, there we go. 
I just want to double check, make sure we're still pressing in nice and straight while we're here. Everything's looking pretty good so far. So what I'm just gonna do here is I'm just gonna bring it to the case half, um, or to like to where it's flush with it, and just a little bit below the oil passageways for the side of the crank, and we're gonna take it out here and see what we're dealing with. Sometimes it does take a couple attempts to press the bearings in straight where we have that oil valley set up. So like mine, I have to actually pop it back out. It's just ever so slightly off. I'll show you guys real quick, but I just wanna see if my depth is looking good. Yeah, so depth is great. So I just have to put, unfortunately press it back out. So to do that, you just go the same way you were going. So we're just gonna push all the way through till the bearings fall out and then we have to unfortunately do it again because they said this can take a couple attempts to get it perfect because it is a little bit of a uh, little bit of a pain in the butt to do. But once you do it a couple of times, it's not so bad. Oh, she's squeaky. How's me looking? Ah, there we go. Perfect. So I'm gonna see if I can bring you guys in the camera so you can see this all right so there's a hole there as you can see you can actually see the hole through it you should be able to see the entire hole not a portion of it you have to see the entire thing because that's going to ensure that we have plenty of oil coming through there to lubricate our bearings so this side's actually done let's go ahead and move on to the next one Hey guys, I did bad. So the PTO bearing, <laughs> this is why I said we're not experts here. So the PTO bearing, um, they, both bearings had a hole in them. I figured the regular main bearings were gonna be the same. It's not the case. I have two bearings without holes in them. So I had to press the other ones out because one side goes with the other and yeah. Hang tight, let's do this again. All right, so it's like 10 minutes later because I just had to redo that. <laughs> Silly mistake. You see, again, you live and learn. This, this stuff, you're not, you're not perfect. At least I realized now before I did two of the wrong bearing on the same side and didn't lubricate one side and it would ended bad. But now we're gonna go ahead and mark our other side of the case here. So you can actually follow the path here. If you can see it on camera, that is our oil passageway and we're just gonna mark straight down the center of it. And what I'm gonna to do too that might help a little bit is I'm just gonna mark the two edges of the hole, which is there and there. Just this way, I have a reference of how the oil is coming in and then also which way the bearing needs to face because that helps a little bit when I did the other one. Now let's grab the correct. So you should have one that has a hole in it and one that doesn't. That's the way it's supposed to be, oops. And we're just gonna go ahead and line them up on a tool here again. Again, I draw on my tool just a little line that's kind of faded already, but still helps. And then we're just going to go ahead and line up this bearing now. See if we can get this one right. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to bring it to the edge of the uh, oil passageway for the side of the crank which is not, so there's a upper ridge, and then you see there's like little notches here, those little three marks. I'm just gonna bring it to the bottom of those guys, and that seems to be right in a sweet spot from the looks of it. Let's see how this one came out. Okay, hole lined up pretty good. It's a little off center. Let me see if it's okay. So I've just been bringing it to the edge of this guy here. I'm gonna see if I can bring you guys in. You can see this, the height I did right there so that's basically that looks pretty good and as far as my oil hole itself it lined up pretty dang good it's gonna be hard to get it exactly perfect but as long as you have plenty of oil flow going through there and as close to perfect as you can we should be okay so right now uh, we're gonna go ahead now and move into where all the plugs should go and everything because there is a cu couple plugs here and then there's some other stuff we're gonna have to plug off like the um, where the piston squirters would, would be going if we utilize those. All right, let's get into it. All right guys, so it's actually a couple days later here. I was actually just curious. I was like, huh, I'm just gonna set the jugs uh, next to the motor, see what it's gonna look like all said and done. The jugs didn't fit the case. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here we have our jug and we have one of the new case halves. Sorry, I'm recording this on my phone so it's not the best quality. But I want to go slide this guy in here. 
and well, it, it, it doesn't do the thing. So it doesn't slide into the side here. Nothing happens. So I was like, huh, that's weird. Maybe it's just, maybe the cylinders are per side, which I know isn't the case, but I was like, maybe it is the case. No, nope, it's the same same thing that doesn't fit. So I was like, that's weird. So I contacted High Tech Power Sports and they said, oh, uh, yeah, you did something wrong. I'm like, no, I didn't. Uh, it doesn't fit into the thing. So I ended up finding out and putting the cases, my old case with the new case. And there's a significant size difference for the bore uh, for the actual um, jug. I'm going to guess that they probably forgot to mill it. So I've been in contact with them. They're actually going to send out another new case, which unfortunately puts us a little bit behind. So for right now, I'm kind of at a standstill. I can't do too much more with the motor, um, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to get the new case in. It's probably going to take a week. But for you guys, it's going to take a couple seconds. So we'll catch you then. One week later. All right, guys. So it's actually a couple weeks later. And I got the new used case, actually. So, and, oh, I found this guy. Yeah. Yeah, somebody had to come and bail him out of putting this thing back together. So. Ah, shut up. All right, I'm so. on the big guns. <laughs> yeah. So um, what ended up happening, we found out that the 850 block is different than all the other ones. So the actual jug itself over here, even though the piston is smaller than a 1000, the jug itself is thicker. So it wouldn't fit into the bore here. So now this one fits all nice and dandy. Boom. It actually fits. Yay. So we are good to go. Now we can actually start rebuilding this thing. Hell yeah. So right now we're actually going to be just taking the old case. Everything off of that has to go onto here as far as the water pump and all that fun stuff. So Yay. let's get into it. All right. <coughs> all right, guys. So let's go ahead. Uh, Seth's got one side of the case. I got the other. So I did transfer over the... I'm going to... I don't know if this is the actual name of it, but the water pump dry shaft, because this goes across the motor and actually hits the uh, gear in this side of the motor. Um, that's what drives our water pump. So that's why I'm calling it that. Um, so I did that already for Seth, but he's gonna be putting in, we got the uh, oil filter screen and there is a like a bypass, like one way check valve plug thing, flap dealio. That's fine. You might need that. So yeah, so Seth's gonna be putting that stuff in. This is his bag of tricks. Um, there is smaller screws that go into the, when you flip it over uh -huh. to the, get the water screen. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the water pump out of this one. So I gotta get a pair of snappering pliers, like show. And we're just gonna go ahead and remove the little snap ring that holds on the gear for the water pump here. Okay, so I don't remember exactly how this came apart. Oh boy. So don't blame me when your crap don't work. Are when I have no oil pressure and... Those are the pins for... Okay. I might need to actually use the straight ones for this. All right, so I know this piece goes here. Yes, but uh, the black flap goes behind that. Okay. First in line. Perfect. Okay. Um, this piece is for... That holds the that in, yes. Holds the screen in. Yep. So I assume that these three bolts are all the same, so they should go into here. So all those uh, for the mud, or for the uh, oil flap deal that Seth's doing, those are going to be all eight millimeters. Those are gritty, huh? Two of them are fine, one of them's gritty. All right, so I just stuck a screwdriver in here so this way I could pull the water pump off. This one's probably actually perfectly fine. I'm going to save it just in case one of us needs it. But, uh, yeah, got a new one, so don't need that where we're going. And then we got to get the mechanical seal, I believe this is called, out. Somehow, some way. So the bolts that Seth just did on the other side, those are going to be... 10 plus or minus one newton meter or 89 plus or nine inch foot pounds. All right, so now I gotta figure out how to get this water pump out. We are gonna have to transfer over the drain plug, I know that. All right, so Seth's putting together the um, oil screen here. It does require a little bit of Loctite. Oh, you spin it to get it out. Get any more out. Holy crap, were you trying to go to the moon with all that? What the? Oh, you're spinning. It's 
what the glob was. It is what the glob was. All right, I gotta figure out how this water pump comes out. Seth's gonna continue doing that. Re um, that. Actually, so the torque specs on that guy are 53 plus or minus inch pounds, it looks like it is, or six plus or minus 0.7 newton meters. All right, guys, so to remove the uh, oil or the water pump some, some. is not as easy as the manual makes it sound. They said carefully pry up on the uh, rotary seal, uh, the smaller inner portion of it, and there is no carefully about it. We unfortunately destroyed that, so I'm gonna have to order a new one, which sucks, but this should all pop out now. There should be like a spring in here, it looks like, yep. So there's the seal. I need to get rid of the, that uh, little cup here that I have to order, because there's a seal behind there. I want to see how it all goes together now. But we have to basically hammer this guy out of the way, which is <laughs> impossible, turns out. They make it sound so easy that this stuff just comes right out. This is fucking next to impossible. They said you can do this in the quad. In the quad? Yeah. All right, so eventually you're presented with this guy here that you have to destroy to get out. There's no other way of doing it. And then there's another seal in here, which just popped out because I've been destroying that too, unfortunately. And it looks like that's it. Yeah, yep. Okay. It's not too bad. I can actually install the one seal for now. I'll have to get that cup. Oh, Seth's getting serious over here. And so I should have this seal, Seth. But I'm not gonna have this here. This might be okay yet. I have to, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of heat, man. Heat is always your friend. Before you get too far, you might wanna get those nuts off there. <laughs> I actually have, it's nice, I actually, no, I don't need to do that. I want to make sure it actually comes out because it's still tight. Oh, you got the freaking other wrench in there, huh? Yeah. Ew. So you, gotta get, you gotta get that off anyway to get my wrench out. Now, the only thing I have to steal off of this case now is the uh, oil pressure sensor. And I think that's it, and drain plug. Yes, the drain plug. Tight. Huh? Should be tight. It's tight. What are you doing over there, man? I'm telling you, it's not like it's loose right this second. Oh boy. There we go. Now she's loose. What we're gonna do for now? To yes, hold sir. this gear in. I'm just gonna s slightly screw this on so it doesn't fall out. I should be able to put that plate in with the motor together. So okay. we're gonna get this sucker into one piece here in a little bit. We gotta get the drain plug out and the oil pressure sensor, and in this case, it can go bye bye. All right guys, it's come time to throw the case together here. So first thing we're gonna do, I did just get this aftermarket rod and crank assembly. It was already assembled, supposedly, and they already put oil and stuff in there, but I don't trust anybody. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull it apart real quick, make sure they actually are lubricated well and stuff like that. Um, might throw a dab of just some assembly lube in there just to make sure. Um, and just slop some oil in here. Just one of these guys helps a lot because uh, you can just squirt some oil in there as needed. Now, one thing I'm gonna tell Seth right now, we wanna keep this, the rods as a pair. So. What's that? Uh, so you wanna keep the rods and caps themselves. Yes, yeah, they already lubricated them. Okay, just wanna make sure. So yeah, we're, we're good to go. They Yeah, they lubricated them already. I just wanted to double check. We'll just throw even a little bit more in there just to, be safe here. Because when you go to fire up the motor for the first time, it's not gonna have any oil in some of the oil cavities and stuff like that, so it doesn't hurt to add some pumps. So for those wondering, Seth, like Seth maybe, that's where the oil gets, enters the bearing. So, didn't have to take this part. They actually did their job, but sometimes you can't trust people to do the correct job, so it doesn't hurt to check. Now we just gotta torque her down and should be good to go. Okay, so took the uh, caps off real quick. I just wanna make sure they did lubricate these, make sure everything was good to go there uh, because don't wanna start the motor up and not have 
any lubrication starting right away. Um, so you want to torque these guys to 15 foot pounds of torque, uh, but you want to start off with half of that. So you want to do like, what is that, seven and a half foot pounds to start um, on each uh, bolt, and then you step it up to 15. So we already did that. So I'm gonna, I did 15 foot pounds already, so it should be first, yep. And it wants another additional 60 degrees of, that's 15. So that's 15, but they want an extra 60 degrees. I'm gonna do like 45, which seems like a lot, I feel like. I'm gonna do, you think I should do less than that? Like maybe like, I don't fucking know. It says, it says to go an additional 60 plus or minus degrees, which seems like quite a bit. It does. Cause that's like a freaking, that's like from going from 15 foot pounds to like. 90. Yeah. <laughs> So we're gonna do like good, pretty good. All right, everything should be nice and smooth now. It feels good. Should have a little bit of side to side play, which is good. Just don't want up and down play. It's a little tight. It's just got side to side play, which is fine. All right. Hey. All right. Since the last time you guys saw us. Um, Marshall's finding out that his rebuild kit is garbage. Uh, so a lot of the seals aren't measuring up correctly. They said they're the correct ones for this motor. I called BS because uh, yeah, it's not doing too good. Um, so what we're gonna have to do is I actually just pushed in the bearings from the old case because they were actually still good. These are actually the the new bearings here. They're, just, um, they're too tight. Um, couldn't get the crank in or anything like that. Oh. We put the old um, crank bearings in and everything went back together good. Um, the old bearings were actually still good. I just wasn't, I mean, you're, you're building an engine. Why not just uh, yeah. use nice new bearings? But uh, yeah, apparently we're not going to do that. So do, Marshall can't have nice new bearings. Nope. So getting this 800 mile ones, which is still not bad. So I'm just using, you don't have to use this. You can just use um, some. Uh, I have one glove, so. I'm gonna try and leave that too. <laughs> uh, what do you call it? You can just use uh, engine oil, is what Can Am prefers, but I'm gonna use assembly loop, maybe with a little bit of, just throw a little bit of it in, because why not? We'll just throw a little dab of it in if you wanna rub that around with it too. Kinda help. And then what we're gonna do first before we do that is just get the seal kit. Dude, this is not the, this is, this is the 800 kit. What the f dude? If they sent me the wrong fucking kit, I knew it. Yeah, guys, everything I've ordered so far for this motor has been a nightmare and nothing is fit. Um, this should be the same, though. We're going to find out if the holes line up. It should. Uh, we're going to want to stick the drive shaft in. The larger portion goes to the rear of the motor, and you can just lay it in there. That's all it does for now because we have to wait to do everything. Now we go ahead and put the seal on. Now, when you put the crank in, you have your rods. Um, you're gonna to wanna to set it up like this basically where your bottom rod is deeper, um, or sorry, bottom rod is facing to the left because that's the deeper portion of the motor. We're gonna drop it in here. Might have to move the gasket out of the way. Might have should have done this other way actually. That's sure fine. Have, but... Gasket last, but there we go. And then let's just kind of get it on its side or on the bottom. Stand it up here. And then so technically we should have a hole in the table <laughs> to do this. And then we can get this guy. Hole is just a drill bit away. Yeah, technically. Trying not to mark the bearings here. And we put her together here. Gotta line up the halves. I'm tight on this. All right. Are you tight? Yeah. Okay. See now, yeah, see, see how this guy like barely any resistance? Yeah, I felt it when I put it in before, yeah. Yeah, well. guys, when I put the other bearings in, um, they, they couldn't even, we couldn't even put the crank in. Were we horrible. recording what we did? Yeah. Uh, why don't you show them a quick flash? Yeah. Just Sweet. a quick one. All right. Yeah, see, I don't like how tight that is. There it goes. There go. Just gotta go a little bit further. Still has to go further yet. That seems awful tight. Oh, dude, I don't know anything about this shit. No, I'm just not impressed with this rebuild kit is what the problem is. That's way too tight. You can't fucking rotate the crank. This 
Mission Rebuild Kit is a piece of shit. That doesn't make any fucking sense. You should be able to easily rotate the motor over with no compression. How was that? Yeah, it was crap. So, so these are the old bearings. There's no play in it at all, which is great um, as far as up and down goes. <coughs> but uh, we call it. now we just gotta get the case bolts. I'd like to stick this up on something so it's, or at least hang this off the edge or something. For what? Oh, to lay it down and do it? Yeah, because we had to torque them. We gotta put all the bolts in now. I have a metal pot. <laughs> well, we'll take your freaking metal pot then. Although it's not a perfectly even surface, so this will be interesting. And we have to get to this side. Oh, that side? Oh, yeah. Mm, sure. <laughs> that. So basically, the bolts go in the reverse of how they went into the quad. And basically, we just gotta find all of them and figure out which ones go where. So there's a couple larger bolts that have to go in, like here. Here should be. You can judge off the depth. So I said you're just gonna want to get them started. Don't start tightening them down yet because we need to line up the rest of the bolts here. All right, should all be. these long ones are all the same size. We can start putting in the thin ones. They're all basically the same size. Yeah, they're all the same size. What are those other three too? Probably the front bearing cap or something. Oh shit! There's one. Underneath the oil cooler. Is there? Yeah. Oh no, so oil cooler does not go on yet. <laughs> I got one, two, three, four, five. Long ones. Get this guy under here. Are these guys all long? What's that? They should be. I'm just gonna bring these all home. Not home home, but. You have the extension on that? Yeah. So there is a tightening sequence we have to do to this. That's why I'm just bringing them down to earth here. So we can get them in the ballpark of where they should be. There's a lot of them. <laughs> One here. There's so many. There. Uh, ten, ten. Ten for the back. That should be all those. That's a ten. Just gotta find that other one real quick. All right, guys, so first thing we're going to do, now we got all of our bolts in place. Um, like I said, we just want to hand tighten them for now, just this way it's case it doesn't go anywhere. Um, going to go with the bigger bolts, too, or the M8s, I think they're called. Yes, the M8 bolts here, which is the 10 millimeters. So these guys are 18 foot-pounds. We're going to go one, two, three, four on the bolts. That's how they want them tightened. So we're going to bring this guy in first. I'm gonna do a nice smooth moment, movement because if you go too fast like I just did, it'll actually trick you. So I'm just double check them all here. All right, now we gotta go on to all of our gazillion eight millimeter bolts or M6s. All right guys, so it's actually a couple days later here. I had to get a smaller torque wrench to actually be able to torque the case down. All my stuff is too big uh, for bigger projects like the cars and everything. So I just got this lovely cobalt one from Lowe's, but it should work pretty good. We're gonna find out. So what you're gonna wanna do is there is a specific um, pattern you have to follow when you go to tighten the uh, case down. So it is gonna be different between the uh, big block case and the regular case it looks like. Um, basically the models with the oil cooler and without the oil cooler. And I did already tighten this down off camera, but I'm just gonna go over it with you guys. But basically what you're gonna wanna do with them is they all get torqued down to 89 inch pounds. So we can go throughout, I'll do it with you guys I guess here. So mine's already done, but Uh, make sure we're still set here. One. Guess I need to go retorque them. Uh, 
Right, everything else is looking good. Is this that first one? Might have to go back through and just double check all of them, I guess, afterwards. Which is a good thing I'm in because the one was a little loose. The rest of them are all looking good here. It's a pretty simple torque sequence. Once you do that, your case is together. You should feel your crank. Everything should feel nice and smooth. This don't ding up your uh, rods or anything like that. Uh, but everything feels good here. No resistance. I can like easily just rotate this by hand. There's like literally no resistance, which is awesome. It should have a little bit of play back and forth on the crank. Nothing up and down though. So if I can hold the case down. Nope, can't move the crank that way. And that's all tight as well. So that's all good to go. Um, now we're going to go ahead and get the pistons ready because next step is we're going to get these jugs on. Um, now I am waiting on some more parts to come in for the side of the motor. So I'm just going to jump into the, getting the pistons on and preparing those right now. So let's get to it. So when it comes to the pistons here, we're gonna go ahead and install our new rings I got here. I got brand new Can-Am rings. Now you can reuse your old rings as long as you spec them out correctly and everything looks good, which we did cover in uh, the last video. So as long as your rings look okay, you're good to go. Mine were okay, but then Seth uh, accidentally um, broke one. So it <laughs> doesn't hurt to throw some new ones in it anyway, so this way we're all good to go. Now these ones are straight from Can-Am. Well, they actually came labeled and everything. That's very handy. So we got the first ring and then we got the oil rings. Very good. So what I'm gonna do real quick off camera that I did in the last video, I'm going to actually just make sure that these all are within spec. So I'll catch you guys in a few minutes when I get that all together. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so when it comes time to install the pistons now, like I said, I just got my rings on here. We're gonna go over which way the gaps should be facing before uh, we actually plop the jugs on. But for now, you should just have your nice new rings or if not used rings back in in the correct order. I'll throw up a picture right here in the manual of what they should look like. For going on the pistons now, for all the engines except for the 650, there is a arrow on the piston that's on all the engines. For the 570 through um, 1000, except for the 650, the pistons are pointing backwards. The arrow should be pointing backwards towards the rear of the engine. The rear of the engine has where the starter is. The front of the engine has the oil cooler for the big blocks. So um, this is so you know where they go. Now apparently with the 650s, I believe, I'll correct myself if I'm wrong, but I think one arrow faces backwards, one arrow faces forwards. Don't ask me why, but that's the way Can-Am did it. But we're gonna go ahead and get our piston in place here. So we can start getting this all lined up. I said this is the fun part. Normally you could put the pistons on the crank before you actually put the crank in the motor by just choosing to do this the impossible and hard way, because why not? There's one, let's take our socket and press in on the wrist pin all the way. There we go. And now we have our little circ clips that hold those in. Let me go ahead and get this piston together real quick. So actually, since I still have to do the rings on this one, I'll figure I'll show you guys real quick. So um, basically what's nice is uh, Can-Am, when they send you new rings, they actually have, as you can see here, each ring comes in a packet, and they actually tell you which one goes where, which is really handy. We're gonna start off with the oil ring, which is the very most bottom one. Now this is, these are very fragile, so you wanna be careful. Uh, Can-Am actually recommends, and also engine builders will recommend using a ring expander. I've never used one before. I never had any issues, but if you feel that you need to do that, then go for it. Now what I usually do for the actual um, compression rings, which are the upper rings, the second and third one, up I guess you could say from the bottom, um, I actually do, like I call it the walk method, meaning I walk the uh, ring down, which I'll show you in a second here, and I haven't had any issues with cracking any, so. All right, so that is our oil rings all set. So we got the second ring down. Now also when you're putting the rings in, they're at least with the factory Can-Am ones, there's an N or some of them say top apparently according to the manual. So those are gonna face upwards. So like I said, I just do the walk down method. This is the one you have to be careful of because this is a guy that likes to shatter. I've, I've done it before, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, you just gotta be gentle and 
I usually just work it into the first slot first, hook it in like so kind of, and then start walking it around gently now. All right, and then pull it out of that slot and just pull it down to the next one. All right, there's that guy. And then the last one. Again, our end faces upwards. And just hook the ring in basically in the front and then just start on one side and just kind of press down, like wrap your thumb around, I guess you could kind of say, and let it fall in, boom. All right, so like I said, this is the other piston here. So for the 570, 850, and 1000, uh, we're gonna be going arrows to the back. So when you feel the piston, we try to hold the rod, because the rod's gonna have a little bit of movement back and forth. Uh, you shouldn't be able to, yeah, so we're good here. So if I hold the, imagine holding the rod as stiff as you can, kind of push down on it and then wiggle the piston left to right, you shouldn't have any play that way, which we're good on that one. And I just put my hand in it. Assembly lube is some mean stuff, I'm not gonna lie. Let's check this other one out here. Again, this guy looks good. All right, so now it comes time to put the jugs on, which I have to wait for because unfortunately, um, I had to get new gaskets for here because the company that, uh, I'm not gonna mention their name, but has been <laughs> not very much help with this build because everything's been wrong so far. Um, but I got the wrong gaskets for the top of the motor here. So I gotta wait for those to come in. So in the meantime, I wanna do some other stuff like get the starter in and some of the other kind of components you can do while waiting for that stuff. I could probably assemble this side of the motor, get the um, timing chain in place, all that fun stuff. So this way, uh, and I actually have to get the guides in there too, so might as well do all that. So let's get into that stuff while we, since we're waiting for the top end stuff. All right, time to get the starter in here. Might as well do something here since we gotta wait on some other parts. So I'm just doing some little things. What I'm just doing is on the O-ring, just putting a little bit of motor oil and putting it around said O-ring. This will help slide it in much easier because Seth had a heck of a time getting this guy out. Uh, looks like there's, oh, there's, that's what that stud's for. We gotta get that off the other case. Uh huh. So Seth was onto something the other day. So there is a stud here I have to get off the other case um, because that slides into the starter right here. And there's only one bolt that actually holds the starter. The bolt that Seth took out was the one I was looking for, actually, which goes in this bag of bolts. So we gotta figure out what that goes to. And then there's this one bolt that holds it on down here underneath from this direction. Now I'd hate to change this guy in the, in the quad because that would be a heck of a time. All right, gonna hit some heat to this and hopefully we can get this out without too much of a fight. So with a little bit of heat, these guys should hopefully pop out. And hopefully we don't destroy it trying to take it out because that sucks. Uh, oh, there it goes. Got it. Heat always wins. Oh, that's not always the case. A lot of times you can turn stuff to liquid and that's not a win at all. Okay, I'm gonna tap this guy in here. Let's not melt the plastic table. Okay, now we can put the starter in. <laughs> yes, that said he was taking out bolts and stuff like that. I don't think that bolt went to the starter that he took out, I'm guessing that's just, that was the engine uh, bolt that he took out, because one was missing. And it's the same bolt, funny enough, so. Seth's trying to throw me off here. All right, here. This is why Seth had a hard time getting this off, because this has to go 
and over that stud. There she is. She's home. And this bolt goes into the back side, which is just mind boggling because when you're doing this in the quad, the transmission is actually right here. So I can imagine how much fun that is. All right, so it's officially time to start doing some stuff on the side of the motor here. So like I said, I got the starter in. Um, unfortunately, my camera was messing up a little bit, but the starter bolt um, that is tor torqued to 25 plus or minus uh, three newton meters or 18 uh, plus or minus two foot pounds of torque. All right, so the first thing we want to grab is our uh, chain guides here. So we're gonna go ahead and just slide this guy right up on in. Get that guy in here, and then we got our bag of tricks here. So the beautiful part about the manual is it tells you uh, all the pieces that need to be Loctited, torqued, all that fun stuff. I can actually see on this guy. I don't know if you guys can see that. You can actually see on this guy that it did have some Loctite on it, so we know we're gonna have to Loctite this guy as it goes in. So basically, this just slides up in, and we're gonna get some Loctite, boom. That's gonna go on there. All right, so as it seems to be a common theme with this motor, uh, this guy is actually going to be 89 inch pounds or 10 plus or minus one uh, Newton meter. So just like the other ones, that's assembly lube, not Loctite. Nice. Uh, so basically they said uh, to use Loctite 243, which is actually just medium strength. So I'm just using blue. That should be more than enough. And just a small dab on the threads. That's way too much. That's fine though. That just means she's not going nowhere. So we're gonna go ahead and, I said you have to actually put the chain tensioner in, or the uh, chain guide in place before actually uh, putting the bolt through. And then now I just need to get a torque spit for this guy. And uh, we'll go ahead and torque her down to 89 inch pounds. There you go. All right, so once you get your uh, chain guide in, next you're gonna wanna go ahead and get the chain in place, which is pretty self-explanatory. Just go ahead, throw it on there. Make sure all the teeth are on. And we are gonna have to figure out a way to make sure this is secured. Uh, we might just strap this tightly here with a zip tie or something for now, just so it's not going anywhere. Then we have our lower guide, which on this side of the motor looks like this guy here. Damn it. So after you get done cleaning off your chain tensioner that you just dropped on the floor nicely, uh, basically from what it looks like is uh, it goes into where this longer tab goes flush with the bottom of the motor. So it basically just slides right in like that and that's all she does. Nice and easy. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the big old flywheel on there. First we're gonna start off with the little gears like this guy here. So putting this all together, can -Am wants us to put a little bit of oil on everything. So we're just gonna fill up this little cavity here with a little bit of oil, even though this doesn't spin. But we're gonna go ahead and put the posts in here for this gear. This, so this gear is our one starter gear here, looks like so. And let's just go ahead, slide it in there. So we got a little bit of oil already. There we go, that should spin nice and freely. We want everything to spin freely. Same thing with this guy. We're just gonna get a little oil on here. So I'm putting this guy in, um, the side that sticks out and protrudes a little bit, it's like this side. This side, as you can see, is flat. That side goes to the case. So this way it stays raised above the other gear. You might have to twist and play with the uh, shaft a little bit. I know it sounds bad, but because <laughs> what it'll do is it's kind of trying to hydraulic on you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play with this for a second. Come on, buddy. Now we're gonna go ahead and stick the flywheel and magneto on. So what we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and put the cotter key facing upwards on the crank, and then we're just gonna slide this guy right on, like so. We wanna try to get this as close to, because we're gonna kinda do, t time this thing here. Might have to rotate it, yeah, because of the starter here. Ow, pinching me. Got to rotate this around real quick. Let's watch our rings. And right there should be close-ish. And should be good. So now it's time to put our gigantic bolt and washer in. This guy actually gets torqued to 111 foot-pounds, so we're gonna need to figure out how to hold this thing steady uh, while we uh, 
put this in. It also gets Loctite, and they, they want 648 on there, Loctite 648, which is basically the really heavy duty stuff. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, clean off this bolt real quick in the wire wheel, and then get some Loctite on there, and we'll torque this thing down. All right, so I went ahead and coated this guy in uh, red never come off juice, and so uh, yeah, now it'll be a lot of fun to get off there in the future, but go ahead, go ahead and throw this guy in. And now we just gotta get our gigantic 14 millimeter, I believe it is, uh, Allen, and put it on the torque wrench and start tightening it down. All right, so once we get the bolt in there, uh, we're actually not gonna tighten it up yet. You'll see why in a second here, but now we're gonna grab the gasket and uh, go ahead and actually install the stator itself. Um, now, the reason why we're gonna wait to tighten this up is because we actually have, for Mr. RPM, we have the crankshaft holding tool. We can stick right down in the hole that we're also gonna use for the timing. That should hold this guy still while we tighten that sucker up. So, let's go ahead and get the gasket out, lay it on there, and then we're going to go ahead and tighten it up. All right, so it's time to put the uh, stator here, the stator assembly rather, um, onto the motor. So first thing we have to do is we have to actually take some um, black, I'm just gonna use some gasket maker, and right around this plug for the stator here. Just gonna dry it off here. It's a little bit wet with kerosene yet. Just gonna put a little bit of dab around this guy here. I'm gonna slide this back over here. There we go. Then we're just gonna put a dab right here across the back. That should seal things up nicely. Now I just gotta find out what I did with the cap here. All right, so now we just have to go ahead and stick this guy right on here. And you just gotta be careful because the magnetism's gonna pull it here. Yep, there it goes. Maybe that was coming. Gotta fight it a little bit. Yeah, it helps steady here real quick. Should be lined up here. There it goes. Everything's just going for a ride here. All right, and now we gotta go ahead and put our bolts in. All right, so I just went ahead and laid out all the screws real quick here because I needed to see what went where. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and torque down this cover. So again, 89 foot-pounds seems to be a, a theme. And we're gonna go ahead and start up here, it looks like, next to the crank position. So no, actually right here. So now we're gonna go ahead, make sure this is still set to 89, which it is. We're gonna start off with this bolt here. Then we're gonna move down to, looks like this bottom left-hand corner next to, this, just to the right of the, uh, Dipstick. Just there. Then we're gonna move to the next bolt down from the crank position sensor. And then we're gonna go to this guy here. And it looks like we're just going around the clock now. Six. And skip over this one, Let's go to this corner one here. And there we go. Just gonna go around real quick and double check them all. So I just put the bolts in the other holes temporarily just so I know where they go. So this way there's no questions about it. Alright, everything's torqued down. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove this guy here. And we have access to our uh, flywheel bolt. Now we're gonna get a lovely tool from Mr. RPM. It's gonna be a, a lifesaver for us. And that's this guy here. So this is a crank holding tool, or flywheel holding tool, I guess you could call it. Just gotta take the screw out for this temporarily. There we go. I do this. The guy drops right in. It's gonna hold the crank for us. Hopefully, it does not rotate. It shouldn't. Yep, should be able to get it here. 
So this bowl gets torqued to 111 foot-pounds. It's gonna be hard to do by myself trying to hold this. I'm going to set this on the ground here so, so I can hold it better and tighten this guy up. So give me two seconds to get her snug. Got a nice blanket over here. I can set this in. That took the wind out of me. All right, let's get the motor back up here. Set her in place here. This poor table is getting to take the shape of the motor. Ugh. She's starting to gain some weight now with everything on there. All right. So like I said, this tool is beautiful because of Mr. RPM. Thank you, sir. I'm just gonna get her out here. There we go. Beautiful. Now we are just gonna leave uh, this crank position sensor out for now because no sense in putting that in yet. We still have to time the motor up and everything. So I can put this away for now, but we're actually gonna be using this when we time the motor too because we have to rotate the motor over, get it to uh, top dead center of each uh, cylinder and uh, go through the timing phase. So we'll do that in a little bit once we get the heads and stuff on. Right now I'm just gonna tighten up some of this stuff that's off the quad like this guy and just a couple other things just to knock them out of the way real quick. Alrighty, so now it's finally time to go ahead and start assembling our cylinder heads here. So uh, I went ahead and did the other head already. It's the same exact process on this guy. We're gonna put in some new valve seals. So um, what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and uh, this is the way I do it, so they go on nice and easy. But just lubricate where the seal's actually gonna be going on. And then while you're in there, you also want to uh, lubricate the actual um, spring um, seat, I guess you could call it. A uh, little shim in there. You want to have some oil around that too. I actually went ahead and just threw some oil everywhere in there for now uh, just to go ahead and start things. Now with the valve seals, I always, usually just like to take a little squirt of oil and just go through it like so. Just a little bit. It helps go on a lot smoother. And then to install them, we're going to use some uh, valve seal pliers. You can get these on Amazon for like 10 bucks. I recommend doing that because you won't worry about uh, hurting your seal putting it on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it on. Should go firmly but nice and easy. Boom, just like that. One done, and now let's do the rest. Now when lubricating um, the seal here, it's also giving a little bit of lube for when we put the um, valves themselves in because uh, why would you wanna go and dry, right guys? Now when you're putting the valve seal in, you wanna make sure uh, it's nice and flush with the valve guide um, and everything is sealed up good that way because if it's not, then uh, you're probably gonna just wear right through your seals and they're gonna start to leak right away. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Now I'm gonna leave one valve seal off for now because um, with my uh, valve uh, spring compression tool, um, it's a little bit um, tight in here. It's not the correct one for the job technically. So um, I'm just gonna leave the one on the front here off so I don't destroy it. I accidentally did that on the other head and had to use, luckily enough I bought uh, enough seals that I was able to uh, use that guy. Okay, so we're just gonna leave this one off for now. And let's go ahead. Now, one thing you might wanna do, um, I already actually did this kind of off camera, is uh, lap in your valves. So um, I'm not gonna go over valve lapping. There's a ton of videos on YouTube about it, but it's super easy. You just wanna use some valve grinding compound like this, clean up the valves. A lot of times you get a little tool like one of these guys and you just go through and um, basically just put the valves in and you grind them so it makes a nice new seal here. So I'm gonna start off with this back one because like I said, um, my tool actually hits on the valve seal for the other valve here. So I don't want to uh, destroy it like I did the other one. So we're just gonna go ahead and do it this way. All right, so when I'm going to put the valve spring in, you can see it's slightly tapered. We're gonna go ahead and put the wider end down. And then our valve retainer here, gonna go on the top and then we can get our little keepers out of the bag here. This is gonna be a little bit tricky to show on camera actually installing this because I have to, unfortunately with my tool, kind of wrestle <laughs> the head a little bit and use my valve compression tool here. Uh, spring compression tool rather. We're gonna go ahead. See if I can throw, show it on camera, but basically it's the reverse of taking it apart. So we're just gonna compress it enough to where you can get your retaining clips in and then you're good to go.
Now with mine I had to kind of work it down because it barely fits in there and wants to slide off so it's actually like a big locked and loaded gun so I'm gonna keep my face back a little bit. <laughs> but the uh, retainer clips have a little, um, you'll see they're slightly angled I guess you could say or tapered. Um, they have like a little notch in towards the top uh, that sticks out. You want that to go towards the top and taper to face downwards into the uh, retaining clip here. Just sketchy because this just wants to pop right out on me. This is like a ticking time bomb that I don't want to explode my face. There it goes. And then just release slowly if I can. Oh, Jesus. It slipped off and grabbed anyway. Whew. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Mine's a little sketchy because it doesn't want to Technically, you should have the kind that has a little circle on it that you can adjust. This is just a kind of crappy one. That was probably a Harbor Freight Special or something. Don't even know where I got, to be honest. But uh, it works and gets the job done, just not as swiftly as it would a uh, regular one. What I like to do sometimes is I just tap the valve a little bit like this. Um, the reason I do that is just to make sure that the valve um, seats took and everything. You're okay. It's okay to hammer your Valve, don't worry, it's not gonna hurt anything. Now I can go ahead and put my other seal in here. And we're gonna do the rest of the valves here. All right, just like that, our valves are back in. That's fine. All right, like I said, just give them usually a little tap just to make sure they're seated correctly. It's okay to do this, don't worry. With the amount of crap going on with these things inside the uh, motor when it's running, don't gotta worry. All right, time to throw the cam back in here. I said we're just gonna use a little bit of assembly lube putting this guy in. Um, you don't need to. You know what? It, I'm just putting a small dab. Not, to, not enough to hurt anything, just enough to give her a little bit of lubrication when it goes to start up. Rather have everything nice and smooth, ready to go. And hopefully, hopefully not, but then, that's just in case the engine has to sit around more as I wait for more parts, because this thing has been not a smooth process. All right, cam is in, it's just smooth. Spin nice and freely, nice and smooth. Got a little bit of drag on it. That's probably from the assembly lube. That's okay. Not bad though. All right. Now we got our rockers. Which are kind of funny compared to car ones. I gotta admit that. But hey, it works. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna lubricate the holes where the rockers go. And we're also gonna go ahead and lubricate just a dab of oil down the shaft here. Just to make sure that's all good. Oops, so they are per side actually. I grabbed the wrong one. We grab this one here. All right. So the roller is obviously going to go on to towards the uh, cam and then the two adjusters go uh, on the the uh, valves, which is kind of nice. It's an overhead cam design, so it makes things run nice and smooth. All right, there's that. There's our shins here.
Getting rid of another bag, awesome. The bags are thinning out. Oops, putting it in backwards. There we go. So don't forget your shims on either side of the rockers, the rock arms. I'm not sure what K&M actually calls them because they're kind of a little bit of everything. And then there you go, it's mostly assembled. Now we have our little plate here. This holds in the uh, camshaft and also the two um, studs for the uh, rockers, pins rather. And I just throw a little bit more oil in that little section there where this slides through. You might have to move the cam a little bit to get it to slide in here. There we go, just like that. This doesn't require any uh, Loctite according to can -Am, at least what the factory manual says. And then again with the kind of sticking with the um, 89 foot pound or inch pound rather uh, deal, we're just gonna torque these guys to 89 inch pounds. All right, and hold her still. And there you go. Heads are basically done for now. Um, like I said, don't worry about adjusting these guys just yet because we're gonna be getting to that after we time the engine up because uh, we're gonna have to rotate it over, uh, get a feeler gauge. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do all that. Um, also, before, once we get the head into the um, onto the engine and torque down and everything, I'm gonna take more oil and just dump oil all across this stuff as we're filling it. Actually, basically, probably when, when we get ready to um, get ready to fire this thing before I put the actual heads on, I'm probably gonna go ahead and just dump oil down into here so this way the whole top end has uh, oil in it because it might take a second for oil to get up to that point when we go to fire it up. So rather be safe than sorry, no big deal. But for now, that's going to do it for the heads. And like I said, we'll get the gear on when we um, go ahead and get it on a motor, but should be good to go. I might just do a couple things off camera like um, install the uh, thermostat uh, housings and everything and then uh, or the water necks rather because these on the 850s don't have a thermostat on the actual engine but should be good to go here in a minute and then uh, we're gonna move on to probably I don't know I think we can probably get the jugs on and maybe get the heads actually on. I mean, we'll maybe do that today because I'm uh, still waiting for some stuff for the side of the motor. Um, but this stuff we can kind of take care of now. So let's get to it. All right, guys, it is finally time to go ahead and throw our jugs on the quad. So um, as you can see, I was test fitting uh, the one because I was having some fitment issues with some stuff from this rebuild kit, as mentioned already. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that the jug was actually gonna fit because these gaskets are way too tight around here. So I had to unfortunately kind of tap them down with a rubber mallet. You can also see how well the holes line up. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but yeah, it's just, it's just thing leaks. I'm gonna be furious at that company. So the first thing we gotta do before we actually uh, go ahead and throw the jug on is obviously get our gasket in place, uh, which already has oil on it, which is great. But we're gonna go ahead and align all of our rings. So uh, basically how Canon wants it, you don't wanna align any rings with the actual wrist pin. Um, and you wanna set them up to be all about 120 degrees apart from each other um, and have none of them in line with each other either. So uh, we'll start off with the bottom one. I'm just gonna kinda point it. Let's see here, the oil ring. Let's see, we'll rotate it to be kinda right there should do. Could I Took it out, there we go. All right, so we got one facing this way. Next one I'll do, uh, second ring, I guess I'll just point it kind of this direction here. And then the top one, we will rotate around to be towards the bottom, like that. So and get our piston basically as high as we can get it. It's right there, looks pretty good. Double check our rings. Now we're gonna go ahead and throw the jug on. Now, they are uh, directional. So basically you have one jug per side and uh, you can't put this one on there because they actually are different. If you see here, um, the chain tensioner uh, hole here on this head, different spot than that head. So you gotta make sure you do this right. So now we're gonna go ahead. Um, I don't have the kind of ring uh, compression tool uh, that can requires. It's basically just a 
almost like one of the ones you'd use on a regular engine, um, but it's basically got a pair of pliers and you can kind of work the head in. Don't worry, if you're like me, you can still get it in there. You just have to be very gentle and take your time, which I'm gonna do right now. So basically what I have to do, I'm gonna have to get down here on my knees and lose the screwdriver. But we're gonna go ahead and start with the top ring. So we just have to line this up here. And we're gonna have to start working this around. I actually found it easier <laughs> resting the piston on the top like this here. And then using a screwdriver, we're just gonna make sure we start pressing that ring in. And there you go, there's one. Now this is the second compression ring. We're just gonna start walking that in as well. So I've done this with snowmobiles and stuff before, so don't worry about hurting anything. I take those things to like 10,000 RPM, not quite, but sounds like I am when I'm ripping across the field, and they haven't blown up on me yet. All right, there we go. And then actually the oil ring should more or less fall in, because they're pretty loose actually. They're just a scraper ring. I'm trying not to destroy this darn gasket here. It doesn't fit anyway. And one's being a pesky here. So basically what I just did is just walk the ring slowly in, kind of just pressing gently with uh, the screwdriver um, to kind of convince them to go in a direction. Now we're going to go ahead and start sliding it down here. I do not like these gaskets, have I mentioned that? But there you go. <laughs> it's in place. I just hope to God I don't have a leak or anything like that because of these gaskets. Like I said, you guys shouldn't have this problem. I might actually even attach this um, rebuild kit in the description so you don't use it because I've been having so many problems with this. But uh, just gonna go ahead and tap her on here. I'm gonna have to give her a little bit of love to get onto the actual, um, what's it called? The pins there, the alignment pins. But there you go, just like that. We got our jugs on. Then we're gonna go ahead. Um, I'm using ARP actually, head studs here. Um, these guys uh, I got from Mr. RPM. And I decided to return the titanium ones after I saw a post from a, another guy on the Can-Am pages that used the same um, head studs and they actually snapped on them, the titanium ones. So going with ARP, ARP is a trusted and true brand. They have like no issues. They're using race cars all the time. I use them. I should have just went with them from the get-go, but I didn't. So now we're going with them <laughs> just to be safe. Let me go ahead and grab our head studs here because for me it's just gonna be a little bit easier. Now you can go ahead and install the head gasket itself if you're just using a regular uh, what's it called kit and what I have to do unfortunately because everything just fits so good with this motor is I have to actually tap the gasket in using a socket trying not to destroy the gasket in order to get on there which is just sad. All right, so now for those of you, the select few that are using um, head studs like myself, you're gonna wanna go ahead, um, I'm putting them in now, you don't have to, um, but what you're gonna wanna do is, before you put them in, we're gonna actually uh, oil these suckers up real quick. So just grab your little oil container here, just add a little bit to the threads. We wanna make sure these spin nice and freely going down into the, uh, the threads here, it should spin nice and freely. And I'm actually gonna call Mr. RPM here in a second and ask them um, if they want these guys torqued down or not uh, to a specific spec before putting the actual nuts on when we put the heads in. All right, so now before we go ahead and get the head on, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get our timing chain in and ready to go. Uh, this can be a little bit tricky now. I should have done it earlier, but that's fine. We're just gonna slide her up and through. And kind of over here. Oops. Oh, wait, there we go. Let's put it over the crank and kind of just walk her through. I suppose you could do it the other way too, but I'm probably doing it the ass backwards hard way. That's perfectly fine. That's just the way I like to do things, apparently. That's the way my life goes sometimes. There she is. Finally got her here. All right. So we go ahead. Set her back on an angle so you guys can see here. I had to get a little creative to get that in there. 
And so we're just going to get our timing chain all hooked up here. Should be this lower gear. My hands are so oily right now, it's like I can't even control anything. All right, we'll just wrap that around like so. All right, now you're gonna wanna go ahead and get uh, your chain guide out for this side of the motor. Stick that guide down in there. And then flop that over like so. All right. You're gonna wanna try to keep some tension on this chain so this way it doesn't keep falling down. There we go, droop it now. So again, this guy, or a little bolt here that the actual uh, thing rides on, that the actual chain guide rides on, gets a little bit of Loctite. I think they said 243, which is basically medium strength, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of blue. I'm sure the comments are gonna be all over me for using blue, but that's fine. I'm sure if I look up the number, it's probably gonna be 89, just like everything else. But I'm gonna look it up anyway, just so I can make sure. All right, so just as I thought, uh, this guy is 89 inch pounds. Um, now we're gonna go ahead, and just take your other uh, chain guide and slide it on down in. Go over top of the chain and it kind of locks in to the head here. Ugh, she's starting to gain some weight here. It was really light the other day. <laughs> and it kind of just goes like this here, so it just locks in. And then the other head, when it clamps down on it, or the head itself rather, um, it just tightens down just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead, um, I talked to Mr. RPM. These just get hand tightened actually. Um, so I'm just gonna bring them down in until they are uh, basically snug to the case and that's all I'm gonna do. So I just gotta grab an Allen key real quick for that. And then uh, we can go ahead and throw the actual heads on and we're gonna get them torqued down here. So let me just take one of these out, find an Allen key and let's get to it. All right, got my little Allen key here. Not sure what size it is. I'm just gonna go ahead as per instructed by Mr. RPM. And then he actually said 60 foot pounds for the nuts. So we're gonna listen to them because they know a thing or two about these motors. All right, so now it's time to put our head on. Now, I know this head goes on this side of the motor because uh, that one's got the motor mount on it, um, which goes on the front of the motor. Uh, that's the only way I know. So, but um, I'm pretty sure these heads are exactly the same. It's not like the jugs. The jugs are side specific. Um, so make sure you're paying attention to that. Just looking at the heads here side by side with the other one over there, they look pretty identical, although this one, let's see here. Does that have, okay, so it still has provisions over there for the bolt hole, so technically it should work, but like I said, just uh, double check your manual for that. I'll put something here if it's, uh, if there is anything that's side specific. Now I'm kind of installing this like a car, uh, is it <laughs> basically using the head studs to hold up, or to help align us here. And let me just make sure the chain's looking good. And then she kind of should just fall right into place here. Kind of have to work to, there we go. Guides a little bit and she's on. Awesome. Let me go ahead and do that for the other side here real quick. All right, now if you are running the Mr. RPM head studs um, well, or ARP, um, they actually come with these little spacers for the non-1000. I guess the 1000 has a taller deck. Um, on it, but it's got these little spacers that go in there just like so. Looks like these are machined really nice. Boom, just like that. And we're gonna get our nuts out here. I think there is some washers under those guys too. And right, I'm just waiting for them to get back to me on uh, if the spacer, I'm pretty sure the spacer and then the washer and then the, uh, the nut. And then uh, for this guy, also so this way we can make sure everything tightens down good before you put the washer on. Just a little bit of engine oil on the threads. This will ensure that everything is torqued down. There's no accidental binding that could come loose on us after torquing, which would suck because then your head's not torqued down anymore technically and you're screwed, which is not good. So let me go ahead and get these guys going. It looks good. Some nice beefy head studs. People are gonna think these, this motor is built, but completely is not. That's okay though. <laughs> no shame. All right, so it's finally time to go ahead and uh, torque down our heads. I apologize if the sound is not as good because my mic actually just died. So I had to get some new batteries for that thing. But uh, gonna wanna go ahead and grab your torque wrench. 
Um, so now I have the Mr. RPM ARP head studs. So my torque's gonna be a little bit different than yours. Um, so with Mr. RPMs, we're gonna go ahead and torque um, this way. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. Can-Am has to do it the same way, but we're gonna be torquing these guys to 60 uh, for Mr. RPM. Can-Am actually wants you to torque them to 15 uh, foot-pounds and then go 180 plus or minus degrees. Um, like I said, so it's gonna be a little bit different for you guys, but I'm gonna go ahead and just torque these. I already did off camera, so I should hear the nice click at 60 here. There's one. Two. Three. Four. All right. And then you have your two smaller bolts that go over here by the timing chain. Um, those guys are going to get torqued to um, 89 um, inch pounds, just like everything else. So, again, one, two. As you can see, I did this off camera already because I wanted to make sure everything was going to be good. Also, with the Mr. RPM uh, head studs, one, one thing I did was I actually brought it up to 30 first, um, 30 foot pounds. Reason being is uh, just, just so you can make sure the head gasket seals nicely and everything, kind of like we you do with the car, you do uh, steps. So I'm just setting this to 30 real quick. I'm actually not using my digital one, as you can see, that I was using earlier because I didn't like the way it was tightening and pretty sure it's actually rating off for some reason. So there's 30. I said for you guys it's gonna be a little bit different. If you're using the stock head bolts. I wouldn't recommend them because I had a couple guys that build these motors I've been talking to say that they actually had problems with them um, stretching. And you definitely can't reuse them. And uh, that's yeah, you don't want issues with them, so that's why I decided just to do these. This way I can actually reuse these if I ever had to uh, tear the motor down for any issue or something like that. Maybe going bigger jugs or something, who knows one day. I'm just going to go ahead and start playing with the uh, side of the motor here. Uh, we have to get uh, the oil pump in. I grabbed a new one because the other pump got a little bit tore up as you can see. It's just got a little bit of marring and stuff like that going on with it. Didn't want to chance it. Um, don't want no oil pressure. So we're going to go ahead and set that guy to the side. I had this one, shout out to Paul Garcia. He actually uh, sent me to look on uh, eBay because I couldn't find one at any local dealers and turns out eBay had it. So it's kind of funny how it works. All right, to install the oil pump, basically all we had to do, we just got to pump some oil in here. Make sure this is all lubricated good. Get that all swished around in there. So the main thing I want you to pay attention to here is that the rotor, each one has a dot on it. They uh, both have to face outwards. There's no orientation or anything like that you have to worry about, but you should be able to put it in there, spin it nicely and easily. And then let me go ahead and get this one ready to go here. You got the dot facing outwards. Again, just a little bit of oil. You know, there's the oil pump. We just want to get everything lubricated up a little bit before first fire up hands are so oily I can't hang on to anything which I guess is a good thing because it means everything should be well lubricated for the day of All right, there we go this like a glove and we're gonna go ahead I believe these guys do get a little bit of Loctite on them so I'll have to do that you see how it's feeling here? That actually feels pretty good. All right, cool. This also has a shim that does go in here as well. And then we have our little, this guy that sticks in there, but we're not gonna put that in just yet because I wanna get the bolts in first and get that all torqued down. All right, so for these guys, they do receive some medium strength Loctite here. And we're gonna be torquing them down to uh, 62 Plus or minus four inch pounds. Be careful 
to not drop screws down into your motor right now because that'd be a heck of a time getting it all back apart. All right, went ahead and got those all torqued down. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our gear here for the oil pump. Now this, we have to be very careful not to drop this pin inside of the motor. So I'm gonna see if I can do this without doing such thing. Did I actually get it first try? I did, look at that. Ha. And then there is a snap ring that should be here somewhere, it's right here. We gotta go ahead and install. All right. Just like that, oil pump is installed. All right, so oil pump is now installed. Um, everything's nice and tight here, should be good to go. I went ahead and just threw on the last timing chain uh, little guide there, and now I can go ahead uh, for now. All right, so to put the PTO side of the motor together, we already did our uh, oil pump here, that's all good to go. And then we got the um, gear on here that goes over to the uh, water pump. You can see this guy actually goes on this way. I had it on backwards before. I was wondering why the heck it wouldn't fit, but the gear goes on first and you put the little pin thing in, slam it down in there, good to go. Then you have your larger gear here. This guy just slips on just like so. You might have to rotate everything a little bit to get it to go. There you go. Actually, one thing we're just gonna do is a little bit of oil on it, just to get that down in there. All right, and last but not least, we got this guy here. Um, not sure exactly what this guy does because funny enough, it uh, doesn't actually um, go to anything as far as like driving anything or anything like that. So not sure what it does, but it goes here and that's exactly where it's gonna go back to. <laughs> and with that, actually, that's this entire side of the motor complete. Pretty simple on this side. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, gasket, which is right here. Wipe the oil off here, I just put on there. See which way it goes, looks like it goes this way. There we are. And then we got our cover. All right guys, so for some reason, our very expensive channel camera keeps overheating. Don't know why, but I put a little bit of um, engine loop and assembly loop on to the um, PTO bearing here. Got everything else in, got this gear in that does absolutely nothing. I have no idea what the heck that does. I'm sure there's a reason for it. But now we're just gonna go ahead and slide our cover on. Just like so. Should line up nicely. Kinda have to tap it a little bit in. Get a little tap all the way around here. Look at that, she's sealed up. Very good, now I'm gonna go ahead and grab all the bolts that go for the cover, and I'm sure it's gonna be 89 inch pounds just like everything else, but I'll double check. If it's not, uh, I will let you guys know, but I think she's gonna be 89 inch pounds. All right, so just like everything else, I figured uh, all the bolts are 89 inch pounds. Uh, so we're gonna start right here. There is a sequence for this guy as well. So we're gonna start up on this bolt here, which is right above the crank itself and then we're gonna go all the way down to looks like this corner yes because that's the bottom there we go then we're gonna go to this guy then this guy and then we work ourselves in a circle now which we start right here next to the line there where the, where the line comes off there, he's going in a circle. All 89 inch pounds again. It's like everything else in this motor. <laughs> and there you go. All right, so we finally reached the moment that all three of you have been waiting for. Uh, time to time this thing up. So if we don't have the timing correct, Things are not gonna be happening correctly and you're probably gonna grenade your motor. So let's not do that, let's try to do this correctly here. So we're gonna follow the manual uh, for this ordeal. So let me try to rotate the motor here so you guys can see it. So a couple tools you're gonna need to do this job is a 
um, flywheel holding tool or crank holding tool, whatever you want to call it from Mr. RPM here. Um, I got this guy from them. And then also um, their cam holding tool. This helps hold the cam nice and straight, like so, basically, uh, for when uh, we're going ahead and put this thing together. So right now, let me get the motor turned over to where we need to be. All right, so the way that can wants you to do this, it looks like you're gonna start with the rear cylinder, actually. We wanna get that guy to top dead center. Um, now, it says the rear piston is at top dead center when the index mark on the fly, or magneto flywheel is aligned with the notch in the magneto cover. So basically, you wanna rotate it around to where it says I2, it looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, this cam chain likes to mess up on me. I have to do this very gently here. It's just so we don't wrap the chain up. Done it a couple times, unfortunately. I see a two here. Not sure if that's I two. So let me just make a full rotation just to make sure. So right now we are on the two I. I didn't see one I for some reason. This is going to hold the crank for us. It should have just locked it in. Let's see. Nope, actually I'll tooth off here. There, and we're just gonna rotate this over until it falls in. All right, sorry about the wind noise in the back behind me here, because uh, what do you call it? I got the furnace running here. It's a little chilly out today in New York, finally. But uh, what we're gonna be doing now, so I got the um, locking tool in position here. We're locked on um, I2, so that's the rear cylinder. So now we're gonna go ahead and rotate the motor around for you guys. I could do this the other way, but let's make it this way the people can see. All right, so now that we have the rear cylinder on top dead center, we're gonna go ahead and do, I had to rotate the cam around how I did it as I just popped out the rocker real quick. And um, now it's facing this way, as you can see, you got the left edge there. We're gonna use our cam holding tool. Slide it like that. And then now we gotta make it this way, the um, lines on the bottom of the timing gear are parallel with the head. So let's see if we can manage to do this. It's gonna be fun. This is gonna take a couple of, tries I'm sure. Oh, maybe I just got it. Nope, my tooth off. All right, so it takes a couple of tries trying to get the gear correct, but uh, like I said, this plate stays in here nice and tight. And then when you look at the head right here on this edge, the two lines should be facing um, horizontally with that nice and straight. We're gonna make it this way. It is that. There's a little bit of play back and forth once you put the bolts in. You wanna make sure that it is perfectly horizontal. And then we move on to the front cylinder. Let me get the bolts here for said gear. All right, so these bolts actually get Loctited as well. So there's a small dab on each one. Then we throw them in. These are our little Allen bolts. I think it's a four millimeter Allen. Go ahead and grab that real quick. And we'll go ahead and snug this up to whatever can am wants. We're gonna find out here in a second. All right, so as a common theme on this motor, 89 inch pounds is the number we're going for. Again, make sure we're nice and level. Just snug it up first so it doesn't move on me. And then, what's nice about the holding tool is it's not rotating on you. Let you snug it up here. That's one done. Pull that guy out. Good to go. Now it's gonna be a little loose, obviously. Uh, chain's gonna be loose because we haven't put the uh, chain tensioners in yet, but now let's rotate the motor 180 degrees here. So this way I can show you the other side. And we're gonna go ahead and set the timing for this guy. God, it's getting heavy now. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna bring the motor around to cylinder one here. There she is. Now, after I put the stop in here, if we check the other cylinder, I believe it should line up a certain way. Yes, it should be kind of funky looking. Let's see if I can get this to drop in real quick. There she is. Locked in now. We confirmed that our timing looks correct in this cylinder because basically if this cylinder is now we're going to be doing the same thing horizontal on the gear, this cylinder should look a certain way. So let me check that out real quick, make sure we're looking good. So basically um, the opposite cylinder, whenever one of them's at top dead center and has the line going straight across here. Uh, so basically the gear itself should be upside down like this and just about horizontal. So that's what I got going on, on the other side. So that means we are in time right now, which is really good. All right, so same thing with this guy, Mr. RPM cam holding tool. I got to snip off my zip tie here real quick. That was 
using to kind of keep tension on the chain while rotating the motor over. All right, so I got my cam gear on this side, nice and level, as, as level as I can actually. It's, it's like a millimeter off from where I'd like to be, so I'm gonna try to rotate it this way it needs to go uh, when tightening up onto the camshaft. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, rotate the whole motor over. Uh, we still don't have our valves or anything like that adjusted. Actually, this one might still be kind of adjusted from what it was before. But uh, what we're gonna do is uh, just rotate it over. I wanna make sure that when it's rotating that everything is lining up correctly. Uh, because if it's not, then we need to fix that now. It'll just most likely to start backfiring through the intake or something like that because it's out of time. But I think we're in time here. Just got to tweak it here and double check it all. All right, so let's get our camshaft holding tool here. I said I gotta try to rotate backwards actually on this one to get it to line up correctly. And then what we're just gonna do is rotate the motor over and watch our cam gears, make sure everything lines up correctly as it's rotating. And as long as everything looks good, then we're gonna call it good. Well, here we go, we're gonna rotate the motor over here. I guess this is the moment of truth. So if I rotate it over to where this guy is level, I hear compression. That's a nice sign. So that guy's basically level. And that guy's up top, just like it should be. And then when this guy goes level, they said, no, still don't have the chain tensioners on, so we're just ballparking. There's compression here. And this guy is level. This guy should be up top. Yep. We're looking like we're in a, in a ballpark here. I think I have I'm definitely hearing compression. There's one. And this one's level across the top. So we are in time. Woo! Now we gotta set the valve lash. So let me get a feeler gauge and let's go ahead and do that. All right, so before we do the valve lashing, uh, first thing we're gonna do is actually install our uh, cam chain tensioner. Um, you guys probably have one that looks like this. This is just the standard um, plastic one that k &M sells you. This is what I'm gonna use. This is actually a billet one from um, Quad Logic. Uh, this is a prototype right now. Uh, they were kind enough to send it over to try on the project. But uh, what we're gonna do is set it uh, to top dead center uh, for that cylinder. So we're in cylinder one right now. And then I just have the plunger screwed in basically all the way. To start, we're gonna install it on the motor here. Engine, sorry. I had a guy comment that I wasn't saying engine properly. Motors usually referred to as electrical. We're gonna go with the norm for this engine, 89 inch pounds, since that seems to be the ticket number. All right, and then now we're gonna go ahead and you'll see there's a little bit of play in our timing chain gear. We're gonna keep, basically get a Phillips screwdriver, or sorry, regular screwdriver, and rotate the plunger until that play starts to go away. So you can see it's starting to get a little tighter and tighter. It might take a minute because mine was screwed in quite a There it goes. So basically when it stops moving, which is... Right there. You're gonna do another eighth turn past that. Just like that, and that sh should be good. Chain has nice tension on it, but it's not too tight. Now with the um, Quad Logic tensioner, you do have to swap over two things, uh, the O-ring that goes on the cap and then the spring itself. Now for the spring, you just line up, there's a little tiny notch in the spring there, if you can see it. I don't know if it's gonna focus or not, but there's a little tiny, uh, or the spring itself has a, a flat spot in it that has to lock into the uh, plunger. You should be able to twist and have resistance. Then same thing with this guy, the spring slides through the notch in this here, just like so and screw it on in. Now Quad Logic is actually gonna be sending out a couple other parts for this rig, which we're excited about. Um, we're getting a couple, couple more billet things, like some billet oil covers and uh, along with the billet water pump. But for now, I can do all that stuff in the quad and they're not here yet, so we're just gonna put all the uh, factory stuff on for that right now. So the same thing applies for the other chain tensioner on the other side, basically you just, uh, 
go to top dead center on this cylinder here. So you tighten up till the cam gear stops turning um, and then go about like an eighth of a turn past that. Put the cap and spring in and that's it. You're good to go. All right, so now let's get into lashing the valves. All right, time to set our valve lash here. So uh, we're gonna start off on the intake side. Uh, Can-Am wants between 0.06 to 0.14 millimeters. Uh, so right now I'm actually just gonna go in between that. Um, that's just kind of what I'm going with here. They were actually set up tighter than that before. So a little loose doesn't hurt, too tight, and you're gonna hang a valve open, which you don't want either. So um, safer to go looser than tighter because you can always readjust rather than Go the other way. Worst thing you're gonna get with setting them uh, too loose is a little bit of valve noise. So it's still loose. So easiest thing to do is you just get your 10 millimeter wrench and a flathead, um, and then crack the nut loose, tighten a little bit. I usually just do like little tiny turns. There we go. That feels pretty good actually. You can tell by the way it drags out. That's pretty. Pretty good here. Just gonna go ahead and snug it up better. Now each time you snug it, you just gotta make sure because it does move. Yep, see it moved on me. It's a little tight now. Just gotta keep working it back and forth a little bit until you get it just right. Let's see how this feels. Yeah, it feels pretty good. All right, same thing with. The other intake valve here. What I'm just doing just to get me in the ballpark is just putting the feeler gauge actually underneath and just bring it down to it to where it touches and then snugging it up and then seeing how how and where I'm at. As you can see it's perfect right there. So let me just give it a final snug. You have to kind of twist back like you're loosening while tightening the nuts this way you can make sure it doesn't rotate on you. And there you go. Good clearance there, good clearance there. Now we're gonna do our exhaust valve, valves rather, and those are 0.11 to 0.19 millimeters. So you can see this guy's very loose here, so we definitely gotta tighten these up. You can do this in a quad too, which is nice. You're actually supposed to do this every, every however many Service miles right there feels pretty good actually. It could be slightly tighter, so when I tighten it up, I'm just gonna tighten a little bit here. Give it a second feel. That feels pretty good. This one actually feels about the same. Actually a little bit tighter. That's about the same. All right, call that good right there. So once you get your valves lashed, the other thing, last thing you wanna do is just actually bring them up to torque. Uh, Can-Am wants 106 inch pounds on them. Now they might rotate a little bit when you do torque them down. So you're just gonna to wanna to go get your feeler gauge back out. Good, and good. Just wanna make sure we're all good to go. All right, so final steps to go ahead and put our valve covers on. Now I upgraded to some Mr. RPM aluminum, cast aluminum ones. Um, it was 30 bucks for these, or sorry, 35 bucks for these, and then the uh, water necks at the time of making this video. Uh, so good deal for some extra assurance that nothing's gonna leak. I tried to upgrade everything I could that's plastic on the motor because if it gets ever hot or something like that, um, all the fluids should hopefully stay inside the motor. So actually gotta go ahead and put the gasket into the cover here. There you go, awesome. All right, so now most of the motor's together. I actually finally got in my uh, rebuild kit for the uh, water pump here. Um, I said Qualogic's actually sending us out um, billet impeller for the water pump and for the oil. But then I also, they didn't even send me this out, I just bought it off their site. I grabbed their wa mechanical water pump seal kit. Um, what's actually nice is it's like 30 something dollars, I think, and it comes with the, the tool, the seals, and even the seal for the cover and everything. So it's. For that, for that money, I mean, that's a good freaking deal. So what we're gonna do is first we just gotta install this rubber guy here. And my camera's on temperature again, that's great. This kind of just presses in, but I'm just gonna give it a couple taps of the large socket just to get it nice and flush all the way around. 
These are the seals that keep the water and the oil separated, so you're gonna wanna make sure these are installed good. Make sure we got an even lip all the way around. It's gonna go down a little bit in this corner. All right, now we go to our mechanical seal here. So this gets a little tricky. I might have to actually put the other cover on first to do this because I believe this guy actually has to slide onto the shaft here as well. It does, so I'm gonna have to put this on pause for a minute and get the other cover on. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you guys how to do that and then we'll jump back into this in a minute. All right, so back to our water pump here. Uh, now we can actually go ahead and install a mechanical seal. So this guy just goes on here like so. And like I said, uh, QuadLogic graciously sends you this tool with the uh, actual mechanical seal. Let me just go ahead and tap her in. There she goes. Awesome. I just felt to go the last second there. Just give her a tap over here. Make sure she's seated all the way. Just like that. Let me make sure everything spins over good still here. Oh yeah, mechanical seal's working. Awesome. Then all we gotta do is put our impeller on, which is has ran away, unfortunately. There she is. Now I'm not gonna go crazy tightening this up because I, uh, since I said I have the billet one coming from Quad Logic. Can't wait to go ahead and try that guy out. Basically just tighten that guy on there. Um, not, I'll put it right here if you have to add Loctite or not, because I'm not sure to be honest. And then we have our cover. Now the cover, you'll see the bolts. One of them has a little crush washer on it, this guy here. So this guy has a little crush washer on it. That's gonna go towards the bottom here. That's actually the drain uh, for the, uh, the quad cell. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna replace this seal because I have a nice cover coming soon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this guy on there. And we should be done with that. All right, so now all we have left to do is I just have to, you guys might've already done it, but I have to now put the uh, bearings in for the uh, dry shaft that goes through the motor. Uh, I was waiting on the seals for that to come in so I could press the seals in and they have arrived. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory. I don't need to film it or anything like that. You press the seals in. Um, super basic, you just push it into where it's nice and flush here. And then the one side does get the larger side. There is an O-ring that also goes in here. That's this way. Keeps your engine oil from mixing with your transmission oil. That's actually a common failure and possibly what happened to this quad, so, um, or this motor rather. So let's go ahead. I just gotta do that real quick. It should only take me a minute. And then this thing is basically done. <laughs> I mean, there's only a couple of little tiny things I gotta do. Uh, put the cam sensor in and a couple of other little wacky things, but no biggie. I got the intake down back. We'll throw that on real quick and we'll be good to go. All right, so I just put the output shaft uh, seal on. Um, what you do with this guy is you just coat it with a little bit of um, gasket maker, basically. Smart TV, uh, oil resistant stuff, obviously. Um, and then you just do a light coating. You don't want so much that you're gonna get an overflow into the crankcase. Um, make a nice seal, basically. Again, 89 inch pounds for that guy. Uh, got a nice new seal in there along with the O-ring. Don't forget the O-ring or anything like that. We need this thing to seal up because I think this is how this motor actually, unfortunately, blew because I think the uh, I think the actual seal went bad and the oil went into the transmission, which sucks. So um, got that guy all sealed up good. Now it's got to do the front one, same thing. And then this thing is close. So you guys can probably see uh, off camera, I got a little busy and uh, getting the intake on right now. Um, got the cam sensor in, got the uh, wire guide here for the, um, for the loom that goes through the engine, so like that. Got that all uh, in. Now it's just a matter of just bolting on the accessories. I still have to transform a couple of the plugs off of the old uh, case yet. That should only take me a minute though. But this thing is basically all back together. And there you guys have it. Just like that, we have a rebuilt 
Can-Am 850 motor. Uh, there's still little odds and ends that I have to do to it, like put the cover on here. Kind of self-explanatory stuff. This is more about the engine internals, getting all that stuff squared away, things that need to be set up right. Um, this way when you gotta fire it up, everything works good. But uh, everything looks really good. Um, I turned it over with the spark plugs in it and there's plenty of compression. It's actually pretty dang stiff when it hits the compression stroke. So that's a good thing. That means this thing is gonna be pretty healthy. We're gonna find out here soon. Um, so stick around because this is going into a quad literally tomorrow. So <laughs> hopefully everything goes to plan. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. This was a fun project. Um, I think anybody with some mechanical abilities can do it. You'll just have to have the proper tools, obviously, and everything. I think I maybe spent about $120 in tools um, as far as like the bearing press tools from Mr. RPM, um, the cam um, tool to hold the cam together or to hold the cam in place, uh, the holding tool for here. The rest of it was mostly kind of non-specialized tools. Anything anybody else could get at Home Depot, Lowe's, Snap-on, Mac tools, whoever you what kind of, kind of guy you are, you can go get those tools and they're gonna work on here. So pretty pretty straightforward actually the, the whole motor was. But yeah, as far as this rebuild kit goes, I was not too impressed. Uh, I was in contact with the company. They're gonna take back the bearings that didn't fit for some reason. I said I did put the uh, old bearings back in because they never saw the heat of when this thing spun a bearing and it does not look like they were affected at all. They still had some of the uh, kind of matte finish that comes uh, standard uh, when you get brand new bearings. They still looked like that. So they were all fine. I just wanted to put new bearings in because you're inside a motor, why not do that? But uh, in this instance, we didn't have to. Um, we were able to reuse those, luckily. Nice new crank, like I said, unfortunately, we had to replace the case. So basically, the only thing we reused was the external stuff, as you can see from the shinier silver parts versus the um, kind of worn-in parts. <laughs> There's a lot less worn-in parts than there is shiny parts. So it did take a little bit extra money to get this thing uh, corrected. I was hoping that it would just be a simple crank replacement, but it did affect the case. So make sure if you guys uh, kind of ran into the same issues this, this thing did to watch our previous video uh, because that one goes over me finding the bad case um, and things to look for with the case to make sure everything's good. But I'm really happy with the way this thing turned out. I really hope it's gonna be a strong motor. Uh, we're gonna find out here in a few days here, like I said, uh, hopefully, hopefully we're gonna have this thing swapped in a day. And I'm sure many of you are wondering where it's going and probably most of you know where it is going. It is going into my Can-Am Outlander 650 XMR and then that motor is gonna be going into my girlfriend's 500 Outlander. So we're doing an engine swap -a on two quads. Uh, this one's going into mine, like I said, um, just up in the power, but then we didn't wanna get rid of a 650 XMR in the channel. So uh, we ended up, we're gonna put it into my girlfriend's quad, which is basically XMR swapped already, as far as the uh, snorkels and the rad kit and everything. Actually, funny enough, if you guys were wondering where I got the rad kit for that quad, it was from the same quad that was this, this thing was. I basically got the entire quad, Besides the quad, um, I, I parted, the, the guy was parting out the whole thing and I bought a little bit of everything off of it that I thought we could use on a channel to make some content with and this was one of them. Yes, it would probably be cheaper for me just to sell my quad and go get an 850 or whatever. It would have been cheaper for me to uh, build a, or just put a big bore on my 650, call it a day, and then use the 650 jugs in my girlfriend's quad but that's too easy. Um, I wanted a little bit of a challenge. I wanted to see what these motors are made of. I basically wanted to dig into these things to see how they worked and everything because I'm very uh, familiar with car motors and everything that's like sitting behind me. I don't know if you guys saw it too much in the videos here, but um, my dad and I do dirt track racing. So very familiar with uh, Chevy small block, <laughs> but um, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, this, this thing was definitely, definitely had its challenges compared to a normal car motor, uh, but nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, I think, like I said, anybody with some mechanical abilities can, go ahead and tackle this project pretty easily. So with that, make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. We really appreciate all the support. And stay tuned for this engine swap. It's gonna be really fun. Um, if you wanna keep up on the build a little bit, uh, check out our Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Probably not TikTok, but most likely Instagram and uh, Facebook. We're definitely gonna have some updates on how the swap is going with this thing. So stay tuned for that. But until next time, we'll have to catch you on Let Dirt Fly. All right, so don't have the radiator hooked up yet or anything, but everything else is hooked up, ready to go. Uh, that's probably gonna take me the longest. I still gotta bolt the diff in because what I did was I actually unbolted the
dry shaft from the transmission and just slid the diff back when I did the motor. Uh, but right now, actually, it should uh, start. I just plugged the fuel pump in. Everything else should be plugged in. This is the first time on camera here. We're going to see if it starts. If my start, my button wants to work. I hear a fuel pump. No way. That's easy. It sounds so good. Everything looks good. I don't have any cooling in it. <laughs> Hell yeah.